brining a chicken is a great way to add moisture and flavor and to try and combat that dry meat that sometimes happens in the breast meat, the white meat. So today I'm going to show you how I break down a chicken, make a delicious wet brine, get that chicken in it for an overnight soak, get it prepped and seasoned the next day and roast it up to deliciousness in the oven. So first step in this is breaking down the bird and what I've got here is about a five pound chicken. Now I'm going to break this down into four different pieces, the leg quarters and the breast halves. The wings we're going to leave attached to the breast halves. I like to do it this way because the leg quarters cook to a different temperature than the breast meat. Breast meat's usually around 165. Legs and thighs can go beyond that, 175 into 180. And I do generally like it above 170. So it's much easier, in my opinion, to cook them separately. And that's my preference when roasting a chicken because that way, if those breasts are done, I can take them out of the oven and let the thighs continue. First of all, let's break down this chicken. I'm gonna start by the good old spatchcock. We're gonna take out the spine. Got my poultry shears here. I'm just gonna go up along the side of the spine. Get around, go up the other side. Don't throw this backbone away. Put it in a bag in the freezer. It is great for making stock. Turn this over really quickly. And we're just gonna press down to snap the breastbone. It's just gonna make cutting here a little bit easier. And I'm gonna work as close to the center line as I can. It's like that. Now you could do half chickens like this very easily, but again, I wanna get these leg quarters separated. Easy way to do that is you just find this soft spot here. I'm gonna cut the skin away. You can actually just take this and feel where it's connected right here. And sometimes you don't even have to cut. It will just come loose. That's one. Let's see how easy this one is. There we go. Now I just wanna take my knife and trim up any excess skin. I'm gonna try and look for any of those flaps that are just gonna lay there like this one right here. All right, those are looking good. Let's get our brine ready. So my brining container today is my seven and a half quart container. I've got it with about two quarts of water in here just to start getting the brine dissolved. After we add the chicken, then we'll add some more water to make sure everybody's covered. The amount of water is not as important as what you're putting into it. Really, you want the water to cover everything. Now, our first ingredient is a half a cup of kosher salt. To this, I'm gonna add half a cup of brown sugar. Now, you could stop here. This is a basic brine. In fact, just the salt is a basic brine. This is where you get to be a little creative and add other flavors, other things you want to it. So I'm gonna add what I want. And the first thing is a tablespoon of granulated garlic, a tablespoon of a coarsely ground black pepper. Next, I'm adding one tablespoon of an Arctic thyme sea salt. I got this as a gift a while back and it's really nice. So this is a little bit of extra salt in there with some great flavor. Finally, a little bit of heat, some pepper flakes. These are a dark and smoky pepper flake from the Flatiron Pepper Company. You could use straight up red pepper flakes or none at all. And I wanna mix this. Now we're gonna add our chicken to this and I'm gonna put the breasts in first because I wanna make sure those are always getting the most contact with the water. That white meat is the thing that has a tendency to dry out when you cook it. The leg quarters are dark meat, have a lot more fat in there, a lot more flavor inherently. So we really wanna make sure that the breasts get great contact with all this brine. Now our leg quarters. These are all fairly well submerged, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to this. If you're having trouble keeping the pieces submerged, you could use a plate. I've used that before, just a small one to help hold them down, but these are looking good. So I'm gonna get the lid on this. It's gonna go in the refrigerator overnight, soak in all this flavor, and tomorrow 
we'll move on to getting it ready for a delicious session in the oven. All right, our chicken has been brining overnight in the wet brine. I took the pieces out, rinsed them off. They're on a rack right now on a tray. And we're gonna get a rub together because we're gonna let these air dry for a few hours before we get them in the oven. And when I say air dry, I mean air dry in the refrigerator. So once we get this rub made, we're gonna dry our chicken pieces off, get that skin as dry as possible, get this rub on there, which is gonna help make our skin not rubbery. Now this is a rub you can customize. I'm using something I like, and it's a quarter cup of an Adkins seasoning. It's a Western barbecue rub, I really like this. To this, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of baking powder. One of the things this is gonna do, it's going to help that skin not be rubbery and hopefully get to a nice crispy state. It raises the pH of the skin and that helps in the browning and the crisping. So let's go ahead and mix this up. Just wanna get that baking powder distributed in the rub. All right, that's good. Let's get our chicken over here. So here are our chicken pieces. A lot of moisture still on the skin and we wanna get rid of as much of that moisture as possible. Moisture is the enemy of skin that gets not rubbery and wants to be crispy. So I'm just gonna take paper towels and start drying the skin off. There's still gonna be moisture inside the chicken from that brine. So we will have a little bit of moisture, but we wanna give it a head start. Now, before I get my rub on here, I wanna sprinkle some kosher salt on the skin because not only for flavor, but that's gonna help dry this out when we air dry it for a few hours. I'm using probably, I don't know, a tablespoon of kosher salt here, just sprinkling. And now our rub, I'm just gonna sprinkle this on, make sure we get a good coating. Remember, there's already a lot of flavor inside the chicken from the wet brine. This is about the skin and the flavor on the outside. All right, that's what I'm looking for. This is gonna go in the refrigerator for about three hours, air dry, and when we're done with that, it's going into the oven. We're gonna have some terrific chicken. All right, here are our chicken pieces. After a couple hours, just air drying in the refrigerator, I went ahead and moved them to a clean pan on a fresh rack. And first thing I wanna do is I wanna get a temperature probe in the breast. I'm not gonna put one in the leg quarters because I'm most concerned with the temperature in the breast because that's what can dry out. So we're shooting for 160 to pull these and those will continue to rise to about 165. If these hit 160, 165, these may be a little higher, but that's okay. They can take that higher temperature. In fact, if these go up to 180, I'm fine. I just wanna get a temperature probe in here. Thickest part of the breast, probably right about there. We are now going to get them into the oven, which is preheated to 400 degrees. In about 20 minutes, I'm gonna turn the oven down from 400 to 325. And at about 130 degrees internal, we're gonna glaze these chicken pieces. And all I'm using for a glaze is a combination of a quarter cup of barbecue sauce and two tablespoons of honey. We'll just brush that on for a little bit of extra flavor. And then once those chicken pieces are done, we'll get them out of there. So I'll see you back here when it's time to glaze these chicken pieces. All right, we're at 130 internal. Let's glaze this chicken. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of water to this pan. That's just gonna help prevent any smoke if any of this very sugary sauce drips down there. And let's glaze. All right, that's looking good. Let's get this closed up. Let those chicken breasts finish to about 160. All right, we just hit 160 degrees internal. Let's check our chicken and those leg quarters. That's looking really good. Let's do a quick check of our leg quarters here and just see. That's showing 174, 174. So these can all come out together and rest for about 10 minutes. All right, here is half of our finished chicken. I just grabbed one of the leg quarters, one of the breast halves. And really, I mean, it turned out looking great. Smells good, but proof's in the pudding inside. This is really about that wet brining. 
The dry brining we did later was to help that skin not be rubbery, but that wet brining is about getting extra juiciness and moisture inside the chicken, especially in the white meat. So let's cut into the breast first. Let me turn this this way. Oh yeah, that is looking good. Nice and juicy. I'm gonna cut a few pieces of this for tasting. Super tender too. As I've said many times, the dark meat, the thigh meat, meat from the leg quarters is my favorite. So let's slice some of this up. Keep that skin with that. You cut from this side, get a bigger piece. I would say that's juicy. Nice. A couple pieces there. All right, my board's a mess, but it is time to taste. First, I'm gonna go for some of this breast meat, this white meat. Mm. I'm gonna try and hold this up to the lens here for you to see. That is just super juicy in there. So if you have that time to wet brine, go ahead and do it. It just works fantastic. Mm. And the flavors you put into that wet brine are really up to you individual, past the basics of like salt and then some brown sugar. This stuff got a nice mix of flavor, Really just a tiny kick of heat. I mean, almost nothing, but I can detect a little bit there. I know people that that would be too much spice, so I would just leave out those pepper flakes for them. But for me, this is great. And that barbecue rub on the outside during the dry brining couple hours, perfect, worked great. Now, thigh meat. If I could only cook one part of the chicken, it would be the thigh. That dark meat, the fat, the inherent flavor is terrific. It accepts the wet brine here a lot, and so you got extra juiciness. Rub on the outside, frosting on the cake. Total cook time today was about an hour and 15 minutes, but that can really vary by the oven. In the oven before I had this one, I've done this cook where it took an hour and 45 minutes. So really, it's about that temperature at the end for the individual pieces. So some sort of thermometer really does help. So that's my oven roasted chicken with a wet brine, a little bit of dry brine, some great seasoning on the inside and on the outside. Take it to a good temperature. If you pull the breast about 160, it'll rise to 165. For the thighs, that 170 to 180 range is fantastic. And you'll have tender, juicy, delicious chicken.